course is a significant problem in South Australia and in fact Southern Australia. Biological control offers landowners another tool which they can use to manage their gorse. Biological control can help reduce the plant's vigour and ultimately the impact that the plant will have on their property. We now have four biological control agents available for the control of gorse, these being the gorse seed weevil, the gorse spider mite, the gorse thrip and the most recent being the gorse soft shoot moth. In February 2016 and February 2017, officers from Natural Resources, SA Murray Darling Basin, travelled to Tasmania to collect some of the gorse soft shoot moth. These were collected from nursery sites that have been established in Tasmania, where it was released back in 2007. Uh, in New Zealand, they found that it uh, they, they found it took about 15 years before they were finding uh, really high density populations. Uh, I don't know whether that was because of the way they were doing surveys or what it was, but we found here in Tassie that we were getting quite good population build up you know, to really high densities where you could collect them like we're going to do today in about five years. By about 2015, uh, the popular population had really uh, basically grown to outbreak proportions. We came in here and to our astonishment we were seeing huge populations of larvae, you know, every shoot just about infested. Uh, that, that was at the central release point. Uh, now, uh, we came back last year uh, with everybody and, and, and collected huge numbers. Since then I think we've traced um, populations of the moth. They've spread about a, 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 nearly two kilometres that way and two kilometres uh, down that way. So it's basically followed the, the gorse which goes in a rim on both sides of us uh, and it's, it's right throughout just about all the gorse you can see here. The larvae go through six instars or, or molts and it's the fifth and the sixth instars that do most of the damage. And so they come out to feed on the, on the new growth and when they finish feeding uh, they, they start to pupate and, and some of them pupate within their um, within the webbing that they form uh, a lot of the pupae actually just, uh, the larvae drop off the, come out of the, they, they just drop off the shoots, uh, fall below into the bush, uh, eventually reaching the ground, that's where they pupate. So much of the pupation takes place uh, below the bush, and uh, when the moths emerge later in the summer, the moths emerge in reproductive diapause, so they stay sheltering beneath the bush, and they stay there until they become active again at the end of the winter. This is a perfect example of what a, a large population of, um, of the gorse soft shoot moth can do. What they do is they, the larvae actually um, web up into the, into the tips of the shoots, the suckling green shoots, and they web, they web a little sort of house around themselves for protection, they come out to feed. And you can see on this bush, if, 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 if you look hard enough, well, that was probably difficult to see now, because you know, back in December when they, were, because this is February now, and they, the, the larvae have all dropped off, they pupated. So all, you, all you've got is the, the bush drying out and the, the, the remaining damage. But if, if, you, if you were here in December, you could have seen the larvae uh, occupying just about every shoot on this bush. Uh, some shoots had multiple larvae on them, and uh, there was lots of white webbing across the bush. So it was, it was very easy to see. On a collection site where the gorse soft shoot moth have become well established, the collection process involves placing a collection tent over the top of a gorse bush, and then by using a standard bee smoker you puff smoke into the bush. Just be aware that some of these bee smokers can produce sparks or embers, so you should use them with extreme caution. You should also have a large fire extinguisher or basic firefighting equipment at hand just as a precaution. The gorse soft shoot moth trying to escape the smoke will generally fly up through the bush and be caught in the collection tent. Once you have sufficient moths in the collection tent, you can then use small specimen containers to carefully capture the moths up against the netting. Don't leave the moths in these small containers out in full sunlight for too long because the moths will quickly overheat and die.
When transporting the gauze soft shoot moth, we normally recommend using some sort of plastic container. The container needs to be well ventilated and we also place some tissue paper inside. This gives the moth something to hang on to and it gives them a bit of protection during transport. A container like this will normally hold about 200 insects. It's also very important to make sure the insects are kept cool during transport. And for this we use an esky uh, with some sort of ice pack um, or ice packs inside the esky. This works quite well. If you're transporting the insects overseas on an airline or something similar, I'd also suggest using some sort of signage on there which alerts the baggage handlers and they'll hopefully handle your products with a little bit extra care. Good site selection is very important when selecting a release site for the gorse soft shoot moth. You need to select a site that is in open sunny areas as opposed to shaded areas and sites between 500 and 800 millimetres of rainfall per year. You also need to select a site that's not going to be disturbed or where control measures are not going to be undertaken for at least five years to allow the insects sufficient time to become established. Release sites can either be tented with a minimum of 100 adult moths or untented with a minimum of 200 adult moths and sites should be clearly marked to minimise the risk of accidental disturbance of the site. The release site details and locations should also be recorded to enable future monitoring.